Hello, this is Professor Ramsey, and today we are <clears throat> going to discuss some additional approaches to uh, building models from the data in designed experiments. And in this case, we're going to use a, a couple of methods that are becoming very common in machine learning, especially for building models for prediction. Uh, one of the methods we've actually talked about a little bit before called prediction averaging. I'll just talk a little more about it. And the other is something called model averaging. And <clears throat> collectively, these are sometimes referred to as ensemble modeling. Up until now, for the most part, when we've talked about building models, we essentially build individual models and use them individually. So here's our best model, it's one model, and we based all of our uh, predictions and decisions off of that model. This is the very traditional way of building models. In other words, it was always assumed the idea was to find the best model. But increasingly, especially with computing power we have today, we've discovered that you know, you can actually use models in combination. So we use sets of models, often called ensembles of models. And you use these models in a couple of ways. Again, we'll call it prediction averaging and model averaging. And what we found in the world of machine learning for predictive modeling is these ensemble models tend to be far more stable and they tend to actually have superior performance. So when I talk about prediction averaging, which we have introduced, <clears throat> here I'll talk more about it. Uh, prediction averaging is the idea is you fit a series of models. Now you could have used, say, forward selection, or you could have used all possible models, which we've previously covered. So you pick some models using these methods. Then you would save and jump the prediction uh, formulas to the data table, and instead of using any one of the models, we'd actually average them together, and I'm going to show how to do that. The other approach model averaging is we fit a large set of models, and for every model we fit, we track the values of the estimated coefficients. And then after we fit some series, it could be thousands of models, uh, we take averages of the coefficients. So your model, you have a single model when you're done, but that model was the coefficients are actually averages of potentially thousands of models. And the way this works is you fit models, for instance, using all possible models, a common approach. And in any one model, if a predictor does not appear, we just set the coefficient uh, value to zero. And then in the end, we just take a weighted average. So uh, there's, a, there's a real um, parallel to the two methods. In fact, if we use the same models for prediction averaging that we do for model averaging, they're actually mathematically equivalent. But uh, due to the fact that we have this modern software, and Jump, by the way, makes prediction averaging and model averaging very easy to do, and I'm going to illustrate for you in a moment. So, Previously, we've talked about the extraction DOE, the extraction data. We're going to use that again uh, for a learning example. And in this case, we're going to fit five models. So one using forward selection with AIC, all possible models using AIC, which is typically our preferred approach, and then all possible models using BIC. Of course, there are many other choices we could have made. But for illustration, we'll pick these five approaches. Okay. So we have a data set, which I'm going to show you, called um, Extraction DOE Combined. And I'm going to pull that up in a moment. And I've already gone ahead and fit the five models uh, using all possible models and forward selection in stepwise. So at this point, I'm just going to switch over to jump, pull up the file. And I'll just illustrate in this file, remember uh, you previously mentioned there were a set of additional trials that were done. Sometimes we would call these additional trials validation trials. 
and I've just combined all the data into uh, one file. In this particular case, I only want to use the original 12 observations to fit models, so I've hidden and excluded the um, what we would call the validation or the additional trials. And I'll show you how we do that. I'm just going to clear out the row states. Notice I've defined what jump calls row state variables. And these are variables and uh, or columns. And what is stored in them are row states. So you set up your table the way you want it. You save the row states to that column. And then when you need uh, those row states, you um, just simply copy them back. And you'll notice in the columns area to the left of the data table, you see these uh, star icons. That means row state variable. In this case, I'm going to click on training data, and I'm going to say copy to row states. So jump will now ignore all of the <clears throat> um, validation data. So what I'm going to do, um, I've already gone through and I fit the five models, but I'm going to actually uh, show you um, how it was actually done, just a quick review. So I'm going to go to the data table. By the way, we don't need validation. We, we're going to just do this in a traditional sense. Let's see. Okay, we already have the model. All main effects, all two-way interactions. Yield is the response. Again, we've shown this, these steps earlier. We go to the stepwise platform. And we could use, for instance, uh, forward selection with minimum AIC. And we've done this previously. And then we can save these models. So I would uh, say go ahead and run model. And it would open a fit group. But I've already done this previously, so I won't take up time doing this today. And again, in the data table, there's a fit group of some of the models. So if you want to look through the models, these were the models that were selected. The final model is an eight-term model using uh, BIC. Notice that there's virtually no variation in the actual by predicted plot. It's nearly a straight line. This indicates that this model is probably overfit and it's over uh, predicting the data. Okay. So what happens in model prediction? So I'm going to go back to the slides and show you what happens when you do model prediction. So I'm going to go to the Analyze menu. By the way, Jump will do a model prediction for you. I want to take an average of the five models. So in the Analyze menu, go to Predictive Modeling, Model Comparison. Okay. I'm going to put in my five models. Click OK. Notice I can actually go and create actual by predicted plots if I want to. But we can do a jump calls model averaging. It's actually prediction averaging, but the terminology of model comparison is called model averaging. So I click on it. And what happened? It added a file to the data table. And if you look, it's a simple weighted average of the predictions from the five models. Well, I've actually already done this previously, so I'm going to delete this column. We already have a lot of columns in the data table. But earlier, this is the formula. Okay, so it's, a, it's an average, and now we use that average as a final prediction. So I'll go back to the notes briefly. <clears throat> so you see the average model. But notice all models get exactly the same weight of one-fifth, a simple arithmetic average. 
<clears throat> Sometimes there can be fairly big differences in performance, say in terms of AIC. Remember, smaller AIC is preferred. So maybe I'd like to use a weighting scheme, give more weight to the better models. Well, one way to do that is through what are called AIC weights. Okay, these are calculated from the AIC. I show you the formula. Okay, and I've actually, I believe, shown this earlier, but these are weights that go from zero to one. Of the set of models you have, the AIC min is the model with the smallest minimum. Okay, so we've done that. And here are the AIC weights for the models. Um, and there's the formula. You can create this in the jump formula editor if you want to do it. And many people like to normalize the weights. In other words, such that they sum to one. Okay. So here is another formula to normalize the weights. And then we take our formula, our prediction average formula. And by the way, just use model comparison to create the formula. Then you just replace all of the one-fifth values with the weights. And so those are the weights. And I've already done this. So here is model averaging with the AIC weights. And so this model now predicts the response, which is yield. So how is it doing? Well, we'd actually like to know how it's doing on the validation data. In other words, how well did we predict the data that wasn't used in fitting the model? So to show that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and clear out the row states. And now I'm going to go to my row state var variable validation and copy to row state. So what this is going to do is just use the additional runs. By the way, one of these runs is an outlier. And by the way, notice, um, if you read the case study, you can't have a run with zero amounts of solvent. So whoever set this up made a mistake in some way. So I've excluded it, and it really is an outlier. So I'm going to go back to model comparison. I'm going to put in my one model with AIC weights. Click OK. And then I'm going to create an actual by predicted plot. So you can see it actually predicts it quite well. Remember, these observations, these seven observations, were not used um, to uh, fit the models. And a really good test of prediction is to have a validation set, an additional set of data, and it actually predicts really well. And in fact, what we call the root average square error, that's just the standard deviation of the prediction error, says it's about uh, 2.9. So that gives you some idea of how much error there is in the prediction. Okay, so I'm going to, again, clear out the row states. And then once again, I'm going to go over and say copy two row states because, again, I want to fit a model. So I'm briefly going to go back to the notes and talk about model averaging. Again, model averaging is straightforward. You just, by some means, fit a lot of models, keep track of the coefficient estimates in each of the models, and then when you're done, you take the full set of models, and you take an average or weighted average um, of the values for each term in the model. In model averaging, we do not reduce the model. Uh, this is actually, in some ways, a plus for the method. There's no subjectivity in picking models. Uh, this method overfits models. In other words, uh, you know, there, are too ma there may be too many terms, but the effects of overfitting are completely mitigated by the averaging process, which overall shrinks the coefficients towards zero. Uh, and some of the coefficients may be near zero, but we just leave them in the model. And by the way, there's a good reason to do this if you're doing things like scale up. Some of those terms that don't look important now could actually become important later on. 
Well, this method is implemented in uh, Jump in the stepwise platform, and it's based on all possible models. So I'm just going to go ahead and illustrate it for you. So again, I'll go to fit model. I've defined the largest possible model. Okay, so my response is yield. So I'm gonna to go to stepwise. In the stepwise platform, I then select model averaging. It's going to use all possible models and I'm just generally going to use the defaults. Um, what this uh, cumulative cutoff does, it actually cuts off five, the 5% 5 worst performing models. There's no rhyme or reason to what this could be. For instance, I'll just show you, I could make it 0.99. What's the largest model you want to consider? I don't know. Um, by the way, if you have a very big model, you don't want to make the maximum model that it will examine too big, or this could take a great deal of time. Eight is typically a good number, but just for show, I'll pick 10. So click OK, and there it is. See how quick it did that? So it fit um, a large number of models. Uh, it looks like about 393,000. These are all the average to coefficient values. And then at the bottom, it says save prediction formula. So I click on it close this. I have done this previously, but I just wanted to show you. And there it saves the formula to the data table. And notice it has done the model in the coded or standardized units. If you'd like it on the original metric, Jump will actually uh, go through and crunch what is tedious arithmetic to put this all on the original scale of the predictors. To do that, you open the formula editor, and with the formula selected, go to the um, editing menu and pick simplify. And see, magically it just converted everything uh, with a, a, a bit of, again, really tedious arithmetic. You don't wanna do it by hand. It converts everything to the original scale of the variables. So how does our model do? Well, again, I wanna try it on the validation set. So what I'm gonna do is clear out the row states, go to the validation row state variable, copy to row states. And again, I'll go back to my very handy platform, model comparison. There's my model average. So the so-called root average square error, a little bigger than the prediction averaging, but not by much. The prediction averaging was 2.9. This is about 3.16. And I create an actual by prediction plot. And again, it fits the validation data quite well. So model averaging is really becoming more and more popular. Again, it's easy to do. It takes out the subjectivity of deciding which uh, subset of factors or predictors to put in the model. And modern software is just making this easier and easier to do. And it is, as I said, quite popular in uh, various types of machine learning. So you're doing something that's fairly up to date. So I just quickly finish the section. I just, these are things I just showed you. And what if you want to then use these models for optimization? I'll just quickly show you. So I'm gonna go back to extraction data. And what I'm gonna do is again, I'm going to clear out the row states and I'm going to once again, just use the original or uh, 12 observations or training data. If I go to the graph menu and I access the profiler, okay, 
And suppose I want to use my prediction uh, average model with AIC weight. So I put that in the prediction formula. But remember, this is an average of five models. So if I don't uh, pick an option called expand intermediate estimates, Jump's actually just going to show a profiler with five models. This literally, quite impressively, takes all the predictions back to the original mo models and factors. So here's my model. And I want to maximize yield. So I select maximize and then maximize and remember. So it's predicting a yield of about uh, 47. I think it's milligrams per liter. I'd have to go back and look. And these are my optimized settings. Okay. So what about my model average um, formula? I can do the same thing. Go to the graph menu, profiler. This time I'll use my model average. Since this is a model directly using the original predictors, I don't need to expand the estimates. I'll do the same thing. Desirability, maximize and remember. And basically, um, the other one was 47. This is a little over. 46, I could call them both up, I suppose. So you can see they're very, very similar in, in performance in terms of the suggested settings. Um, there are some differences. For instance, the prediction averaging does not suggest using butanol but remember, in model averaging, um, you know, we're actually averaging a lot of models together. And it does not recommend, neither recommends using propanol. Uh, both recommend using methanol and ethanol at their high level. And both recommend a pH of 6 at time 2. So in the end, they're actually pretty similar. Uh, we're if you're running the process, you might opt for the solution using less solvent, less effluents to deal with, and less cost. Okay, but the idea of this was just to illustrate this idea of prediction averaging and model averaging. Okay, and again, these are state-of-the-art techniques and increasingly in design of experiments. I am more and more recommending to people I consult with to just use model averaging. Thank you.